Camino there pilgrims um, today I'm just starting my second day of walking um, out of Najera we walked 28k yesterday um, which was uh, that walk from the Gronio to Najera was uh, not beautiful it's through mostly kind of city park and stuff um, but it was a quite easy walk for the first day um, so I really uh, it was nice and um, uh, I've got some uh, a couple of great experiences kind of Camino magic happening even in that short trip um, um, these pilgrims that uh, they had created this song they used this song from Europe this child these children sort of uh, sing-along song from Europe that I wasn't familiar with but all the Europeans that were here were familiar with it um, and they had adapted the lyrics about uh, Camino de Santiago very funny uh, kind of rejection of why we're here at all um, and uh, so they came upon this musician who was just singing along the side of the road and they helped him learn the melody and he then accompanied them as they sang their rendition and it was great uh, but the other thing that was fun is I spent most of the day walking with two Danish uh, women um, young women in their early 20s um, who are walking uh, from St. John and uh, got to know them a bit and share stories about cultural differences and talked about that mostly cultural differences between uh, their northern European country and the United States um, it was just great conversation um, and we ate lunch together and um, and I stayed at uh, a nice alberga kind of off the road uh, off the main Camino in town there at um, Najera and uh, I got to talk for a bit and one of my roommates there and I'd actually met him on the road a bit earlier one of my roommates there was um, Roberto Roberto's from Houston and uh, um, has been in Italy studying uh, for a while for a couple of years I think and um, he uh, is here this summer doing Camino and um, so it was good to to talk with him and and um, to be able to learn a little bit about his story so yeah so getting to meet a few folks that um, is part of the reason I love to come out here um, and uh, just ready for another day Some of us, this is the speed of Camino. Today we're only walking 20 kilometers um, and uh, we'll end in Santo Domingo and um, staying at a Donativo Albergue there uh, they are taking reservations right now because of COVID uh, and I assume that's true of other Donativos um, but uh, yeah so looking forward to a nice day I'm only doing 20 kilometers today which uh, should be 
quite easy given that I'm in great health right now. So uh, I'll talk to you soon. pilgrims so today um, I'm walking out of Santa Domingo and unfortunately for me I guess uh, I'm walking much earlier than I would like to uh, there are a couple of older Spanish pilgrims I think they might have been husband and wife or certainly together um, that decided to have full conversations at 6 a.m. this morning so after about 25 minutes of hearing them bang around and talk to each other. I decided to just go ahead and get up. So I'm out here outside of Santo Domingo. Um, Santo Domingo is a kind of a famous little town because of a, 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 a sort of miracle story that's told about the place. Um, there's a German family walking through Santo Domingo many years ago and um, a Spanish girl takes a liking to this German boy and decides to plant silver in his bag when he's not responsive as a uh, punishment, if you will. Feminist critique will have lots to say about that little trope. But, um, but anyway, so the uh, boy is caught with the silver in his bag and is executed. He's hanging in the streets. And the family goes on to Santiago grieving. And on the way home, they return to Santo Domingo to pay respects to their son. And when they arrive, he's fully alive, still hanging from his noose. And, uh, and so he, the, the family goes back to uh, the police officer and says, you know, our boy is still alive. And, and the police officer responds by saying, uh, that boy is no more alive than the chickens on my plate. He's eating dinner. And uh, just as he says that, the chickens on his plate come back alive and fly away. And so, because of this little miracle story, um, they actually keep chickens, two live chickens, in the cathedral. Um, and so, it's a very interesting miracle story but the thing that's the, the true part of um, Santo Domingo that's really fascinating is um, Santo Domingo is um, Santo Domingo himself was a, sort of an engineering uh, person and he was responsible for building bridges and other structures that would help pilgrims make the way um, I believe the 11th century so um, there's a bridge that goes out of town on the way out of Santo Domingo that he's responsible for. It's been rebuilt um, a couple times in the same style as his bridge. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's a cool town and I'm glad that I got to stay there. Probably the better part of staying there for me was that last night I got to spend um, quite a lot of time with the largest sort of group of pilgrims that have been walking together for instance, since St. John. And um, there's a lot of them that are there together and they really have a great group and, and lots of laughter. Um, lots of international uh, diversity there. Um, and of course the, the French and the Italians are arguing over who has better cheese and better wine, uh, which is also very stereotypical. So lots of fun there. Um, and uh, yeah, you can probably see the sunrise coming up behind me here. It's a beautiful morning out. Um, it is gonna get hot later today, so maybe my Spanish friends did me a favor by waking me up early. Uh, I'll get off the road about a half hour before I would have before. So that's nice. Um, 
but had a nice walk yesterday nice time with those pilgrims last night um, and uh, and walking today to Bellarado just I think it's 22 kilometers um, so not another not short but uh, certainly not a long day and looking forward to uh, another day of Camino Pilgrims often ask me, or, or wannabe pilgrims, future pilgrims, often ask me about the uh, terrain and the kind of walking path that we're on. And this is a very typical path for Camino. Um, it's hard packed, you can see. Um, sometimes there are roads that are meant for cars and just don't get a lot of car traffic. This one I think is a dedicated walking path, but um, this is kind of, I, th I usually say this is about one third of the Camino are these kind of hard packed um, trails and then about one third is just walking along the roads in towns and cities and then I usually say about one third is more like a wilderness hike you know a one person wide trail uh, with big rocks and things like that so it gives you a little bit of idea of some of the typical uh, paths that you'll walk mm -hmm. 